mothers and uh, fathers, please take your kids to the uh, babysitting, located in the gymnasium. We appreciate uh, the cooperation. Um, I would like to uh, welcome you all to our uh, second Islamic Days, the title of Family First. Uh, I would like to introduce our honorable speaker, uh, Dr. Amjad Borshi. It's an honor to have him here for two days for this wonderful conference. And I thank you all for participating. Uh, today's lecture uh, is titled uh, Social Media and Muslim Servant uh, or Master. A few uh, key uh, housekeeping notes. Um, there is a prayer room outside. Uh, there's those doors to your left. Uh, please turn off your cell phones or put them on mute. Uh, we would like to uh, keep a good environment for our speaker and for ourselves to have uh, a successful uh, conference, inshallah. Uh, there is going to be a Q&A uh, session at the end of the lecture, so please hold off on the questions. Uh, our volunteers will be handing out uh, papers if you wish to write down your questions. And those questions we will try to go through as many as we can. Um, there will be uh, also a, a draw, I was told, at the end of the Q&A session. So please hang around, uh, you might win uh, a good prize. Uh, I'd like to uh, now introduce uh, Dr. Uh, 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 I live in Ontario, Oakville, and I'm one of the board members of Dar Foundation, uh, which is a community center and a masjid. And we were proud of one of the best things that Allah has blessed us with lately is having Dr. Amjad Borsha with us for now more than a year, alhamdulillah. Dr. Amjad Porsche is um, known internationally as a professor of comparative religions from the uh, Jordanian University, uh, Jordan University in Jordan. Uh, he graduated uh, bachelor in Sharia and master's in Tafsir, and from Burnham University in England, PhD, which he had lived there uh, six and a half years. He, mashallah, traveled the world, uh, preaching for Islam, uh, uh, MashaAllah, talking about a lot of changing the concept. On the, one of the best things that I really can say is so special about him is he does his best to change the way people look at Islam, even Muslims themselves. There's a lot of misconceptions around. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I mean, that's a very powerful uh, way to tackle it. Uh, Dr. Amjad has uh, joined so many TV shows and YouTube uh, channels, and he's very active on social media. One of the very few I know that have used the latest tools of media to reach to as many people as possible. That much that every session, even when he was teaching in the university, and he's still a professor of that university, his lecture could be attended by 50, 60 uh, students. MashaAllah, another 50, 60 students from another department, they come and join as just visiting his session. And another up to 40,000 viewers from all around the world because he keeps it live on Facebook. That's how much, MashaAllah, he cares about you know, getting the message across the whole world. Uh, he's with us today with a great topic. Thanks for your, you hosting us. And inshallah, you will know more about him if you, uh, through his words and through the wisdom that Allah has given. Jazakallah khair wa salam alaykum wa Zakallah khair, Dr. Barakallah Fiqh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassion, the most merciful. All praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Social media, servant or master. You can tell, you can easily understand that basically my role is try to provide an Islamic perspective towards the idea how we should as Muslims deal with the 
new phenomena for human beings for this global big village, which, which is the social media. We used to have media. <laughs> then we have social <laughs> media. And I'm not able to concentrate the Haraka Kthir Kthir. Is it possible, Malish? Assalamu alaikum. Sorry. Hadim Ken. Thank you. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters in the back, please be seated. The lecture will resume after everyone is seated. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khair. I'm very sorry. I'm a very visual person. If I'm, I'm watching tens of people moving at the back, I'm not able to concentrate. I'm losing my full concentration. Anyway, a social media servant or master. As you might have already maybe realized part of my uh, way as an academic, I, knew t I need to lay down the basics at the beginning. Because my biggest job, basically, in these two days, I'm trying to fix some certain concepts or to try to change or try to show how should we be viewing this or that concept. So we have a big question. We as Muslims, actually, it's not just us. People in the globe, they are suffering and having a big problem with this new phenomenon, which is the social Media. Social media, it's a big phenomenon. It's like uh, you know, a phenomenon that contains a lot of new things, affecting people all over the world. It's not just Arabs or just Muslims. It's a global phenomenon. How we should we dealing with it? I go back to square number one, as I did in the Arabic session. Now, your way, how you, the vision that you look at yourself and towards existence is very important. Before I start talking about social media is good, social media bad, social media blah, 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 etc. This is possible, by the way, if I have just five few minutes, but it will be a very naive, superficial, you know, talk. So basically, as an academic, I should go back to square number one. Because I have a new, what I have already said in Arabic, maybe at least, maybe 50% of you, you were not there. So I'm addressing at least 50% new audience. I need to use something that I've already did somewhere else, but just to have like a common ground while I'm talking. Now, there is something very important that I love to use it in English language. They say no definition, no prohibition. This is like a proverb. No definition, no prohibition. If you do not, يعني بالعربي لا تعريف لا تحريم. This is like a philosophical proverb, which means if I do not define who am I, why I'm saying such and such, depending when, on what I claim X, Y, Z, basically you can't understand, I can't argue, I can't say this is right or wrong, because if the colors, all of them are mixed, I need to define. No definition, no prohibition. I will give you a political example. For example, Mr. George Bush, when he started attacking terrorism after the 9-11, you know, sad event happened. By the way, he stayed for many years with the American administration fighting terrorism. But do you know that they did not define, they did not give a definition for terrorism? Because if they, what is definition? Definition means, tell me exactly what are you talking about? If, for example, George Bush's administration decided to say terrorism is, I quote, any group of people who try to mischief or to attack another group without any kind of valid legal reason. This could be applicable on 50% of American troops on earth. So no, 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 forget that. Another, another definition, okay. It is such, 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 but this is applicable on part of the British troops in Vokland, Ar Argentinian island. Okay, forget it, no definition. Tayeb, what if this is applicable on the French troops in Africa? Okay, forget it, no definition. Then they came with this beautiful slogan, which is, he who, he who is with us is a freedom fighter. He who is against us is a terrorist. Ta -ta -la -la -la. Ten -ten. That's it. 
If you are with us, you are a freedom fighter. If you are against us, by default, you are terrorists. This is not a definition. <laughs> so I'm just giving you like a political joke about what do I mean by no definition, no prohibition. We need to decide what is the definition of you. When you talk, you say, I'm, I'm, I'm a Muslim. Okay? Maybe the majority are sitting here are Muslims. This is an Islamic school. I'm asked to give a perspective from Islamic point of view about a global phenomena, depending on what. So I need to define some certain things to understand. I go back to another example that I used many times in different countries, especially when I was talking with non-Muslims. There is a very beautiful example. I will tell you why I will use it after I finish using the example. The example says, it's like a universal like a, a story. It says from the Indian culture, actually. It's, it's a quotation from the Indian, Indian culture. They say, someone wanted to make an experiment. So he decided to bring, to do this, to carry on this experiment. He brought about six to seven blind people, temporarily blind. So he asked them to close their eyes. So in this experiment, Practically, they were blind. So none of them has ever, never in his life heard about the word elephant. They know nothing about what elephant could be. Is it a food? Is it a drink? Is it a garment? Is it clothing? Nothing. So th this was the best condition. So they were brought to this big hole, and there was an elephant inside the hole. But they know nothing about what elephant could be. So temporarily, they are blind now. So they were pushed, and they were told the following statement. Keep walking till you touch the elephant, which he does not know anything about it, okay, or him or her or whatever. So once you approach this elephant, tell us what is it for you. So they are blind without previous idea, okay? So... I will call them Mr. Uh, Mr. 1, Mr. 2, Mr. 3, okay? So Mr. 1, closed eyes, no previous definition. He kept walking. He came by the, you know, the leg of <laughs> the elephant. He was touching now using this touch, this sense of touch. Okay, Mr. 1, what is the elephant? He said, it's a tree. Number 2, he came by the tail. What is the elephant? He said, a rope. Number three, by the tummy, what is elephant? I think he said it's a wall. Number four, with ear, what is elephant? He said a fan. Number five, he came, well, you know, the trunk and the, uh, the chunk and the trunk, I think. Huh? So one of them, he said, this is a snake and this is a spear. So the question is the following. Now, for these six or seven people, the elephant is either a spear, or a snake, or a wall, or a tree, or a fan, or a rope. Okay, now, the beautiful question. Who is saying the truth? <laughs> truth? The elephant is a spear? Who's, I mean, when I say the truth, they are telling exactly what elephant is. Who's saying the truth? No one. Type. Who was lying? None. None of them. They did not have the intention to lie. Look now. None is saying the truth, and none is lying. But the truth is missed. In the end result, no one realized the truth, the reason. Because they were approaching this thing from a very narrow channel with a feeding information which is very much less than it is needed. Which means, to realize what the elephant is, you need to look at it, not just to touch it. So you need extra feeding system of data to realize. Plus, maybe, uh, by the way, this is, could not be enough. Okay, at least you realize it could be, it's at least a being. Maybe you will realize it's an animal. Anyway, so they were asked to uncover their eyes. Not, oh, oh, oh my God, so what? Okay, so they asked, it's a big, huge animal. Now, next step, to realize 
more, maybe they need to live a little bit or to read about it or to compare or to see some videos or slides or to try to see in its natural you know, place to realize that this elephant basically is a, is a very powerful animal. It could pull, for example, maybe five tons of weight of trees or water, and I can fight with it, and I can protect my village, for example, with two or three, etc. So, now my point, I used to use this example when talking with non-Muslims in specific to tell them the following. After I finished this, I used to say, uh, by the way, for me, the elephant is Islam. The elephant is what? Islam. Many nice people who are non-Muslims, they are nice, they have good intention, but the amount of information they have about Islam, it's like that nice guy who was approaching the huge elephant from one sense, which is touch. So it's a tree, he's not lying, but he's not matching the truth. It's a rope, you are not, that's why I, for example, discovered in America, I lived one year in America, I visited more than 130 cities in America. I discovered that the majority of America, 95% of them, their first channel of knowing about Islam is Fox News and CNN. Fox News, in specific. You know, you, when I say Fox News, do you know what I'm talking about? Fox. You know Fox? 95% of Americans, they know just the lies and the big destructive images, you know, or, uh, for images against Islam, a biased media, which is Fox News. For example, anyway, why I'm saying that? So I'm using this example for Muslims and non-Muslims to tell you before talking about social media, we need to define who are we in this universe and why Aslan we want to discuss the idea of social media. Why should we? We know to, to, to tackle this very soon. We need to know that we Muslims, we have to have it as a common ground. We believe that we are part of the creation of great God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is the only creator for the universe. We are part of his creation. Now, he decided to create us for a purpose, to worship him with the general meaning of worship. I did say it in Arabic when I highlighted the following concept, which is, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا The concept of worship, basically, it's the full obedience in every single aspect of your life. It's not just the ritual worship. And he told us that at a certain time, the race of a human race basically will be vanished and will end, but it's him who decides when. And we are asked to live and to lead the life according to his wish in what we call al-istikhlaf wa imarat al-ard in Arabic, which means like a successive authority with the guidance of God. We believe that this God, when he created us, he gave us two systems. System number one, it's in a form of a word that we call it fit. Have you heard this word in Arabic? Fitra means the inner nature, the instinct. So we have two types of creation within ourselves. The external one, this is external fitra. This is our skeleton, the physical one. And we have an inside psychological skeleton, if I may put it in this way. It's designed by God as well. We realize by the fitra, with the inner nature, the basic minimum requirements Note now, I'm building what I will be using to tell you how to deal with the social media. So we believe as Muslims that God has created within us as a built-in system the realization for right and wrong by default with the minimum. So when we are born, we do not come with zero it's very similar to the concept of if I have a laptop now. Consider that this is a laptop, for example. Can you give me this back, guys? Thank you very much. Just to make it, I'm a very visual person. What is this? Laptop, okay? Now, this laptop consists basically of three main things. The hardware. Hardware, this is the physical, okay? 
and it contains an operating system, Windows in the, you know, شو اسمه النظام الثاني؟ Windows. Ah, and we have the Mac. We have the iOS. What is what? What do you call it? Operating system. Operating system. If you don't have it, you can't download any kind of programs or applications. So it's like a built-in to receive the extra added values to be able to do the best. Now, if I do not have the operating system, I can't use any software. I have the operating system by its own, nothing else. I can do nothing. <laughs> so I need both. The operating system is the fitra, which is the inner nature. It contains my basic realization for good and bad. I will give you a simple example. And by the way, sorry. Now, if I want to do extra good, best results in my, for example, working sheet, Excel, this is Microsoft Office. I want to de deal with photos. I need Adobe Family. What is it? Photoshop. I need to, de to, to do very beautiful video. I need what? For example, Final Cut or Adobe <laughs> Premiere. Okay? This is extra. So basically, this is the external fitra. We have the inside fitra operating system. Then we receive the revelation. The revelation, such as the Quran, is the full package of programs that when we receive and we apply, we have the best results in our life. Okay? So depending on this way of understanding, we believe that God created us and he gave us the built-in system to realize, then he sent us the compatible system to give us the big full image about what should be done and why and how. <laughs> Are you with me? So, depending on that, depending on that, let's provide you with the following concepts on this big idea. Concept number one. We as Muslims, with the common sense, we realize that in our life we have something, in Arabic we say, we say wasail and we have ghayat. We have end goals and we have what? Means, tools. So tools should be helping us to reach what? Goals. Ahdaf, wasail. Now, we are in a best humble way, proud that we have a very beautiful goals, which is very simple. By, by, by the way, if you want to sum up all of them, we have just one goal, which is Ridaullah. What is it? From the end. So here? Pleasing Allah. We are seeking the pleasure of Allah towards us. We want to please our Lord. If you want to just to make it simple in one word. Now, if you want to add it, we would love to please Allah and to get into the Jannah. <laughs> okay? This is our goal. Oh, by the way, is there anyone who hates to go to the Jannah? Well, seriously, I'm asking. Because I want to, 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 to put concepts now. Is there anyone? Maybe there's someone. This is, you know, freedom of speech. Please, if you hate to go to the Jannah, tell me. I will tell you how you can. <laughs> God forbid. Now, by default, Jannah means for us the eternal what? Happiness and pleasure. So this is our goal. As Muslims, we understand that. Look now, I'm building the concepts. Any new <clears throat> what can I do? I can't change anything. <laughs> no, nothing to be changed anymore. Wow. Mm. <clears throat> so I forget what I was saying. I'm just going to go to the Really, do you want to go to the Jannah? Are you sure? You invited us. Ah, so, so. <laughs> so our point basically, 
والله اي 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 لوست ذا كومبليت كونتس ان ماي مايند لا لا نسيت السياق اللي عم بحكي فيه لا حول ولا قوه الا بالله اي سيستم اي غايات اي وسائل بتعرف ايش بتحكوا والله اي لوست ذا فول كومبليت كذا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد استغفر الله العظيم سو ناو ام شور ذات يو ار وذ مي اوكي طيب كان يو جو باك جزاكم الله خير بسم الله سو وي كليم ذات وي بيليف ذات اور جول شود بي اور التيميت جول وي هاف ا لوت اوف سمول جولز ان بيتوين اوكي وي هاف وات فاينل التيميت جول ويتش از تو بليز الله سبحانه وتعالى اند تو جيت ان تو ذا جنه ناو Next point. Anything in our life, any means, any tool, anything does not help but to lead us to this goal for us. It could be a waste of time or haram. Tab <laughs> Sheikh, what do you mean by this? Are you gonna tell us that social media is haram? I did not say anything yet. I'm just building concepts. I'm telling you that if you want to make the best benefit of any new thing in your life, you must not detach yourself from the ultimate reality that you, I, we should be believing in, which is to please Allah. So anything comes in you, latest, Nice, good, you must put it under the filter of does this lead me to please my Lord or not? I'm giving you the tools how to make fatwa for yourselves in anything that comes in your life. Are you with me? So, after this point, another concept. In Islam, according to the teachings of Prophet Muhammad and before that, according to the teachings of the Quran, Muslim scholars in general, they divided what we call them in Arabic Al-Ahkam Al-Khamsa, the five teachings or the five verdicts in Islam. What's Ahkam Al-Khamsa? Ahkam Al-Khamsa or the five verdicts in Islam basically, they are the five descriptions for any act that can come to your mind How do we view it? They say from the fa- this extreme we have, for example, the haram, which is the prohibited. The other extreme of the equation, we have the wajib or the fard, the compulsory thing, the thing that you should do. The definition of the haram or the prohibited is, it is the something that you are not allowed to do it. If you do it, you are committing a sin and you will be punished as a sinful person unless if you delete. How to delete? You repent. Okay? The other extreme I have what? Here. Wajib. Compulsory. It's a compulsory. It's a must. It must be done. I have to do it as long as I can. If I do not do it, I'm falling in short. I'm violating the law. If there is no obstacle physically to prevent me from applying it properly, I'm a sinful person. <laughs> so I have to do it. Now, one step. We have five. One, one. We have two here and we have one here. Okay? So, close to the middle here, we have something we call it makruh. Not recommended. Okay? Which means, please, we prefer not to do it. <laughs> If you insist to do it, you are not a sinful, but you will do something not recommended. Don't do it. It's highly, like for example, if you go to pray, okay, you are highly recommended for you to have nice, beautiful clothes with a nice perfume. Don't just finish your job and go immediately to the masjid to pray. If it happened, I was in a hurry and a little bit tired. Okay. So I decided not to change my clothes. And there's some kind of a little bit not nice smell on my, you know, clothes. It's makruh. It's not recommended for me to go. It's not haram, but please don't do it. Please. For example. Now we have here what? 
مستحب مندوب which is recommended or highly recommended it's highly recommended now for example when you give this sadaqa to give it with a smile it's highly recommended whenever you see anyone in the street to smile in his face it's not wajib which means if it happened that you were thinking of something you did not smile you commit a sin no 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 it's highly recommended please do it as long as you remember and you can highly recommended to put the perfume for men when you go to the masjid highly recommend highly re so now in the middle here what i need we have what we call in arabic the mubah mubah permissible شو يعني permissible mubah mubah means no one is encouraging you to do it or not to do it it's not haram it's not wajib it's not mustahab makruh it's not mustahab mubah now this mubah covers 95 to 98% of our lives. What is the hukum of having a laptop with a silver color? Mubah. What is the hukum of having dark blue, for example, a t-shirt or jacket? Mubah. What is the hukum of drinking coffee in a white cup? Mubah. What is the hukum of having a nice beautiful roses at the front and fro when someone is talking bid'ah is it bid'ah it's mubah are you with me it is what mubah what is what is what is what is what do we have millions of things why i'm saying that now we go to another ruling very beautiful ruling I'm trying to establish a concept of filtering system, how to realize the new things in your life. Next concept. Al-aslu fil ashya ghayr al-ibadat al-ibaha. The original rule in Islam, apart from ritual worship, ritual worship such as going to the masjid, performing the prayer, how many times you have to recite the Fatiha, or to how to say it, or how to say whatever. Should we do this way or that way? How should I be reciting the Quran? This is ritual worship, okay? Doing the wudu ritual. Apart from ritual worship, which should be directly from Prophet Muhammad and from Allah, apart from this, okay? And apart from things that we know that they are wajib or haram, everything else is what? Mubah. Are you with me? Mubah, which means permissible, as long as there's nothing direct regards it in Islam. Right. Next concept. The Mubah sometimes could be moved to Haram or to Wajib or to Makruh or to Mustahab. <laughs> the Mubah. For example, what is the verdict of playing basketball? Mubah. Tab, if in my country, basketball, in every game, someone is fighting and there is a bloodshed after every game. Now, this is called a new hukum that I might decide not to let the people play basketball as a theoretical example because they are fighting and they have no toleration and they are killing each other because of they are very, you know, fanatic fans. So now, basketball turned to be a reason for bloodshed. Now, it's originally mubah. Now, it's misused. Are you with me? So, now, in this context, I can't say playing basketball in this place with these people is haram. Because it's misused. Right. If we can control it, no problem will happen. It turns back to its original status, which is permissible. Okay? Type. I am using basketball games to bring people together to get to know each other in a very nice social way. It became what now? Mustahab. <laughs> Highly recommended. The same. So sometimes, so it is, so it is mubah. Type. Now we move to next Concept, okay? After understanding, al-ahkam al-khamsa. 
we can realize, by the way, from this uh, point that, according to these rulings that I have highlighted now, dealing with social media originally is what should be? Mubah. All cases? No. <laughs> it depends. It depends. It depends. So it depends. I will give you an example now. TV devices. What is the hukum of manufacturing TVs? And by the way, do you know that some people, it's not just, by the way, it's not just us. Before Muslims and before Arabs, even in America, do you know some, some limited Christian groups in America, they were called in the American history the fundamentalists because they believed that some certain anything that was not, did not use or happen at the time of Jesus Christ, like some Salafi groups in Islam, exactly, by the way, exactly. By the way, the word fundamentalist, it came because of an English, Christian, American context. Fundamentalist means those who insist to go to the fundamentals, al-usul, which they, they reject any what in you think. Somehow, some similarity to the Amish people. Are you with me? Because they refuse using what? The new technology. Okay, it's part of their faith. I'm just trying to explain to you from where the problems happen and how to define and how to see things. So this concept, by the way, we do share some certain things, such as the concept of bid'ah, with some Christian groups in America and some Amish people, by the way. <laughs> we do. Some, limited. But some people, they generalize it, they misuse it. Okay? So, so we don't say that anything was not used at the time of Prophet Muhammad is haram. We say anything apart from what? Ibadat, okay, or sha'air, anything clear, it is mubah. We come now to our concept, like for example, the TV, the cars. Now, the car, is it something good or bad? By the way, thieves, when they rob banks, they use cars. Therefore, manufacturing cars could be haram. What do you think? Tayyip, by the way, manufacturing knives, haram or halal? Knife, knives. Uh, for example, you can't live without knives, basically, because you can't cook. Can, can you chop meat without knife? You can't. Tayyip, when someone kills someone else, God forbid, what is the best cheap way to kill him? It's a knife. <laughs> the same tool. I'm just trying to fix in your mind how the same thing will, will have its verdict from how it is used. So the knife, the car, the TV, it, uh, weapon. Manufacturing weapons. Is it haram or mubah or wajib? What do you think? Can we say manufacturing weapons is haram? It depends how do you use it. <laughs> it depends it is under the hand of who. By the way, the dictatorship regimes, they are controlling their nations through what? Through weapons. They are killing them. Taib, the, the, if we consider the United Nations, should some more in English? Neutral, oh, sorry. If, if we consider, not necessarily I believe in that, but if we consider the United Nations as a neutral a group, they must have weapons to defend, okay, peaceful nations. So, now I hope that I fixed the idea how to view things in general, okay? Let's move now to more Islamic thing. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in two hadiths, I will be narrating after this huge laying down of concepts. I will jump with you, I will move with you with two Islamic, pure Islamic concepts through two prophetic traditions. 
I will highlight them, then I put them like the first, let's say, basic of the building that I'm trying to build in your minds. Prophet Muhammad said in a very well-known hadith, La, who can guess what I will say? La, غيره. لا غيره غيره ما بيش هاي واحدة ثانية لا لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربع by the way my topic is what my topic is what social media servant or master are you with me we come back to our hadith. لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربع عن عمره فيما أفناه وعن جسده فيما أبلاه وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه وعن علمه ماذا عمل به None of you will be moved from his status at the day of resurrection and accountability in the day of judgment, but he or she will be asked about four big major things in his life. He will be asked and he will be held accountable for one, his life, his time was spent in what? <laughs> Two, his body was ruined in what? He became weak in doing what? His money was brought from which source and was spent in which channels? Fourth one, وعن علمه. Focus on this, especially the youth. وعن علمه and his knowledge. Okay? ماذا عمل به. Focus on this now. And about his knowledge, what he has done with it. Did he use his knowledge to promote goodness, khair, helping? Or through the social media, he became a professional hacker attacking the mobiles or the laptops of girls and... Blackmailing. Blackmailing. Started blackmailing them after stealing their special private photos. How many people they do it on earth now through the social media? Am I using now my knowledge with the new thing which should be mubah? Okay? To spread rumors, bad news, make troubles, promote hatred, or I'm spreading nice, beautiful jokes to let people love each other. Am I spreading jokes or writing or composing something that help the people to realize and understand their goal in this life or I'm using the social media just to make fun and to cheat the people and, and, and whatever. So I have this and I have this. So Zulu. So this is part of the our faith. Do you remember? Our point, we said we have a goal because we believe that we were created for something which is Al-ibadah. And we give the definition of ibadah as what? Ta'atun wa qiyadun khudu'un lillahi in every single aspect. Full obedience for God in all of our aspects. And at any time, I will pass away, I will leave this world of life, and will be held for accountability. Another hadith. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, we need some kind of focus on this, especially for the youth. It's not a little bit could be a difficult concept. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَبَّلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَ وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ Part of the rules that, part of the laws that Allah has laid down, we call them universal laws that were created by Allah. Okay? That قال قانون البلاء والابتلاء Part of the laws that Allah designed the universe on them for us as human beings that we will be tested all the time. Now, this is not new for us. The new thing for some of us could be al-bala'u bil khayri wa sharh. Most of us, for some reasons, 
We understand or we think that the bala, which is the test, the trial, the defeat, should be just in hatred difficulties in our life. The thing that we hate. For example, Allah abtalani because I'm a poor, so ana mubtala. But what if I'm very rich? Have you heard when we say someone who's facing cancer, for example, say, oh Allah, may Allah be with him with this trial, this test. Allah is testing him. How many of us we say when our relative became a minister in an Arab country, we say, Allah ikum ba'un usar wazir, Allah mubtali. How many of us we do it? May Allah be with him. He became a minister. Oh, Allah is testing him. How many of us say this? Zero. We go and congratulate him. Mubarak. You in the newspapers and we go and make some Mubarak. Mubarak ala ish. Mish Mubarak. 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 Mubarak ala ish. I was me. The word wazir in Arabic from the word al-wizr. Wal-wizr. Billuga al-arabiya al-himl al-thaqil. The word wazir, minister in English. In Arabic, wazir from the word wizr. The root verb is wizr. Wizr means heavy burden in your shoulder, which means you when became a minister, the by definition, definition for you basically is you became someone with a heavy burden in your shoulders and you will be held accountable in the day of judgment because you were responsible in yourself and just maybe your family, maybe your brother and sisters, you became responsible and in charge of all the people of your ministry. For example, the minister of education, you are in charge of the 500,000 or the 10 millions under your supervision, for example. Okay? So, لا تزولوا قا... Sorry. Hadith. ونبلوكم بالخير بالشر والخير فتنة. So, we will be testing you, putting you into trial in خير and شر. شر, we know it. Evil. Because we hate what we think is bad and evil. So, we know it. What I need to highlight now, البلاء بالخير. Al-bala now means what? Test. Allah is testing me in what I think is khair. For me to be experts in technology. Is it khair or shar? Generally, generally for human beings. When someone became a master, professional in, for example, high technological skills. Is it something good or bad? Good! We are, we, are, we, are, you know, we are fighting to do this type. I became expert. I'm able to use this high technology. I'm able to make all of these things. I became to a degree that I can program. I can design. I can attack. I can create viruses. I can make hacking. For us, wow, Niyalo. You know Niyalo? Kev Niyalo? Lucky man. Huh? Lucky man. He's a lucky man. Wait. In Islam, there is... We can't decide he's a lucky. He is mubtala. Ah, he is under the test now. God provided him with the high IQ, high ability, high skills, conditions, environment, good parents, good money, good country, nice time, no wars, no hunger, no suffering. All of these circumstances to be able to use his mind and become a professional. He's able, tayyib, he does not have laptop. No Wi-Fi, no third. he can do nothing. All of these things, ni'am, blessings from Allah. Okay, how you, am I going to use it? So if I misuse it, I'm committing what we call literally, lughatan al-kufru bin ni'ma. Have you heard the word kufran al ni'ma? By the way, let me just express something about the word kufr kafara. Now, kafara. In Arabic means to cover. And by the way, the English word was taken from the Arabic. To cover in English means kafara in Arabic, which means to cover. That, okay? So, now and the word, would we Let's just give me a third Ah, kufran al ni'mah. So, in Arabic language, we say kafara bin ni'mah. He has denied and rejected the blessings in a very rude, arrogant way. It's metaphorically as if that you gave me this gift. So I have it. Literally, in the lexicons, I have it. Then you ask me, where is the, where is the water? I don't have it. Where is it? I don't have it. Sorry. Where is it? I don't have it. But I do have it. This is I have. But I'm what doing? Kufr. I'm doing kufr now. This is kufr. 
This is kufr linguistically. You see? So I'm hiding, denying, ignoring, acting as if I don't know. My definition in God's sight is I'm a rude person. Waqih. This is the kufr linguistically, okay? So, when Allah gives me a time, a technology, an ability, understanding, power, tools, devices, money, time, all of these things, I'm under the test now. Am I going to use it in a good way or in a bad way? Tab Sheikh, who decides what's good and what's bad? We said from the very beginning. If we are Muslims, we have a system as a reference point. There is something good and bad for us, clear. Anything has to do with nudity, against modesty, against purity, against chastity is haram in Islam, whether you love it or not. So therefore, porno sites, mubah, will mustahab, will makruh, Porno sites. Haram. Tayyib. Going to them by using the social media. Haram. Helping people to know them. Haram. Promoting them. Haram. <laughs> Are you with me? So I'm using now the rules. For example, anything that promotes hatred, problems between anyone. By the way, social media. Spreading the jokes that you make fun from a group of people or race in Islam is haram. It's prohibited. It is prohibited. We, I mean, it's not up to you to me as long as you are hurting someone. Okay, but, but you know, give me evidence from Prophet Muhammad, a hadith that says it is haram to send a WhatsApp message contains a racist joke. Give me a delil. Do you want Prophet Muhammad? 1400 years ago to give you a specific hadith talking about the WhatsApp? Hmm. This is what you want? If someone is thinking in this way, he's not using any, anything of his mind. <laughs> we have general rules. <laughs> we have big principles in the law. Anything promotes hatred, okay? Racism is haram, whether you are using WhatsApp or Qatar. Now, most of the social medias, especially like the Instagram, for example, or the Snapchat, but Instagram on what? It's basically what? Photos. In Islam, what is the hukum for a woman to show her beauty without the hijab? For anyone who's apart from her father, the father, the brothers, and the husband. It's what? It's originally haram. In the social media, اختلف العلماء, صح? No, the same verdict, haram. But Sheikh, بعد شو فيها هذا عملت هيك بس قلت nice, hi. يعني عديها يا شيخ يعني ما تدقش بقى. وأنا بدي عديها هو الدين عندي من عندي أنا. It's not my religion. It's God's religion. I'm giving you as an example. With me, طيب. Originally, what is the hukum? What is the verdict of swearing, you know, you know, at someone in a bad words? It's what? Haram. Tayyip, sending these bad words in the social media. Haram. Tayyip, what is the verdict of helping two people who, who were fighting to fix the problem between them? It's highly recommended. Tayyip, using social media to fix problems, highly recommended. Are you with me? So if you want to know what is our status from the social media, make analogy, qiyas, in everything you know in our original real life. Am I allowed in my real life to do this and that? Yes and no. The same thing is applicable on the social media. But we have some kind of extra thing. The social media has, because it's a new phenomena, and a new, it contains some new tricky things. Now, you have to be aware that social media, because you don't see the people and no one is watching you, it helps more to do maybe what we call the tasahul, where you feel it's easy to do the wrong thing because no one is watching. So if you want to take my advice, using social media or dealing with social media could be a nice test for you and me 
to keep testing our, the level of our iman. <laughs> because, as look, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he says in a hadith was narrated by, uh, uh, it was narrated in the, the Sahih Ibn Majah. قال يؤتى بأقوام يوم القيامة يؤتى لهم بحسنات قدر جبال تهامة أو تهامة قال فتعرض قال قال لم سايس محمد فيجعلها الله هباء منثورا فقال الصحابة يا رسول الله هؤلاء منا إخوة لنا عم تحكي معهم قال نعم إنهم منكم من بني جلدتكم ويصلون كما تصلون ويفعلون الخير كما تبوا لكنهم أقوام كانوا إذا خلوا بمحارم الله انتهكوها. In the hadith, Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says, I'm talking about social media now. He said, at the day of judgment, some people will come from the believers with a great rewards, a lot of hasanat, like big, huge mountains, which means millions of rewards. Just for a moment, they are happy that they have achieved all this kind of good, beautiful rewards. Out of a sudden, قال يجعلها الله هباء منثورة. Everything will disappear. The weight will be zero. Like just, you know, small dust or, you know, in, in, in the air. Which is nothing. هباء منثورة. The companions asked Prophet Muhammad, say, Ya Rasulullah, are you talking about Muslims, believers? He said, yes. You are not just believers. They are like you. They pray like you. They do good things. But... It was part of their system. It's part of their character. Part of their deeds and actions. Because whenever they are alone, they used to attack and to violate the law of God, which means they were not respecting the fact that God is watching them. Are you with me? So, depending on all of these things, how shall I deal with social media? Now, by the way, indirectly, I have already given some quick messages. Let me give you this simple example, how the mubah, the permissible thing, could be upgraded to be always in my side and for my side, depending on all the rules that I have highlighted. One of my uh, students, she told me that her brother traveled to one of the East European countries. I forgot the name of the country now because longer time ago, about more than maybe 20, 30 years, something like Bulgaria, Hungary, one of these countries. So he was traveling with a, a taxi. In the language of that country, which I don't remember now, it was written, there was like an old car, you know, uh, it, it was driven by a, an old man. It was written in the back, you know, of the car, with that language, something like, if you want to ask about Islam, please stop and ask me. <laughs> so this is an Arab Muslim, the one who's giving me the, 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 the story. He said, I asked the taxi driver to stop him and to, I want to speak with him because what does this mean? I want to, to see what, what, what's up, okay? <laughs> what's the story? So we stopped him. In that, like, hey, thank you very much. What do you mean by if you want to ask about Islam, just stop me? He can't speak uh, the English language, okay? But what did he do? He spoke with the taxi driver. He came to the trunk of, you know, the car. He opened the trunk of that old car. He, was, he had already divided, you know, that space into about, let's say, 20, 25 different boxes. In each box, there was flyers and brochures in different languages from different Muslim countries you know, introduction to Islam in about 25 different languages. What was the story? This man is a retired, and he's a Muslim. A Muslim, they are minority in that country, let's say, Bulgaria or Hungary or, or for example, Romania. He said he wanted to serve his Islam with the simple means that he already has, which is old car, retired, no money, no languages, no translation. But what can I do? Nothing. Go and wait for death and die. No, 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 no. He wanted to serve his, what he believes in. Look what he did. He went to all Muslim embassies in his country. Assalamu alaikum, hello, marhaba. In his language, basically, you know, do you have anything that I can introduce it in your language about Islam? So he collected from about 25 embassies in the country. He can't speak any language except his. <laughs> he put them there. He put in the language of his country and his car, so anyone stops him. You know, sometimes, even if you don't know the language, you can tell, for example, 
مرحبا مرحبا اهلين ما بعرفش تحكي مثلا بعتي الرشانكي بروسكي بروبوسكي اي اي رياض ذات هي سبيك راشنز فور اكزامبل اوكي اف سم ون سبيك ويز لايك ذيس فور اكزامبل ذيس از ايتاليانو اي وي نو ذيس از فروم ايتالي اوكي اي مكسيكانو اوكي مكسيك مكسيكانو كام بليز ذيس از لاتينو اوكي اي نو اتس هسبانيك وات ايفر ايفن اف اي دونت سبيك ذا لانجويج ويز ذيس سمبل واي هي واز سبريدنج ذا دعوه اند ذا خير with the very simple humble means without any kind of high technology or high wi-fi or laptops with the simple why i'm bringing this example to tell you that the final message in my talk allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the high technology god almighty has blessed us with the knowledge with by the way knowledge is power high technology is power so it's a test for us originally it is mubah at any moment if i misuse it i'm violate, violating the blessings that god has given me how can i know you have two laws islamic law and the inner nature law even if you don't know a good knowledge sometimes your subconscious will tell you if someone is doing that against you or against your mother or against your father or doing that are you are you satisfied with this do you feel happy yes or no so we have backup system by this i hope that i have highlighted a general inshallah idea how to deal with the social media zakum allah khair for being good listeners we'll start i think now a session of q and a Q&A session zakum allah khair assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Yakum, so uh, we will collect the questions if anyone has written any questions down. We bring them over here. Okay. 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 In advance, I need to beg your pardon. In case if I could not cover all the questions, please forgive me, because sometimes the questions are much more than the time that is allocated for the questions and answers. But I will do my best. Okay. The WhatsApp group, you spend a lot of time on WhatsApp groups. Family needs, basically. Okay, question number one. Question number one. Someone is asking about the WhatsApp groups. Sorry. Any and WhatsApp group on? Subject. Subject of? Uh, more important than answering family or husband. Ah, husband. Now, those who give priorities for WhatsApp groups more than the needs of the family. <laughs> Question. Make analogy. You have the, the law now. If... A sister, a mother, who should be doing her duty towards her kids, is sitting with her friends at the homes of one of her friends five hours a day, leaving the kids in need without fulfilling their needs. She's committing what? Between makruh and haram. Is there a need to answer this? The same thing. Now, this is a new phenomena. It should be used for khair. Or it is mubah. Uh, we have fixed in no al asl of al ashia ish it's it's mubah it's permissible as long as it does not violate wajib or haram if it promotes a prohibited thing it becomes it becomes haram if it affects a wajib or a compulsory thing and it makes it for example not being able to do it it could be as well what haram If it's not, I'm doing my duty, no problem. Wallahu alam, in a very short way. Assalamu alaikum. Arju al-umr al-masmuh bihi al-istimal al-social media min qibil awladina. Someone is asking about what is the permissible age that we should be allow, uh, to allow our kids. To be honest with you, I can't fix an age. It depends. But generally speaking, generally speaking, I will give you my, my experience. My experience with my kids. On mobile phones, for example, as a mobile phone. 
we set up a law at the house, I and my wife. None of my, I have one son and four daughters. None of them has the right to have a personal mobile before 10th grade. I don't care if you agree or disagree with me. I'm telling you about, I believe before 10th grade, I'm not talking about Canada, I'm talking about Jordan now, okay? I'm just new in Canada here. So before 10th grade, she is using a mobile in many times, but not her own mobile alone. We believe that around of age 16, okay, around of 15 and a half, 16, we were not permitting our kids to have their own mobile. After that, we decide. Now it happens that I have five kids. One of them, we felt she's not controlling herself and she's not able really to, to uh, let's say, to make benefit of her time. We take a special decision for her at the end of the high school, 12th grade. Yes. So I can't keep saying this is the law just by 10th grade, by whatever, type, social media. Maybe, maybe we can say we prefer between 10th and 9th grade. Oh, sorry, maybe, maybe we can say around high school. I can't give, it's, it's, I can't say it's, th th that's cut. Please, you need to build this on the fact that you know your kids. You know how mature they are. You see, you watch how, to what degree they know what to do, what to say, and they are using it and what and how. You need to lead them, to control, to sit with them, to discuss, to see. Sometimes you might allow your son to deal with social media at the age of maybe 15 or 16. Another brother, maybe you will not allow him up to the age of 18. So it depends on to what degree he is controlling himself or not. To what degree some of our kids easily could be brainwashed. Some of them, they are very powerful in their charisma. I can't deal with the same, you know, we have individuals. So I'm, I'm sorry, I can't tell you exact name. But generally speaking, if you believe that he's still young, he can't grasp what happens around him, it is dangerous for him to let get him, especially now. You know, there's an amazing, do you know that millions of sites of porno sites, one of their most important tags that they write, you know the concept of tags? You know the hashtags and the tags. Tags basically are the, the, like the keywords when someone is searching, if this keyword is written in the tags of this video or this whatever, by searching will lead you to this. The most important hashtags and tags in the porno movies is Tom and Jerry and children cartoon. Yani, if your child is looking to see Tom and Jerry, according to millions of sites, tens of porno sites will come in his face. Do you know this? You need to educate ourselves about what happened. By the way, one of the things maybe I forgot to tell you, that, for example, now the biggest disaster in the social media, the privacy and the things that has to do with the porno things. It kills. Many people, they don't know that porno sites, they have addiction, medically speaking, exactly like the drugs on the brain. Exactly. The one who's addicted on porno sites, the influence, the effect on his mind here, exactly like the one who's addicted on drugs. So it's a big issue. And by the way, do you think many companies on earth, they put the parents' control on the mobiles and on the laptops and on the Wi-Fi and, and, just for the sake of restricting? No, kids, they don't know. Kids, they are very simple. They are very, you know, naive. They don't know. Plus the human trafficking, you know about this. Amazing. Amazing. May Allah protect them, inshallah, with Allah. Yeah. We have these two women talking about the same thing. What is the verdict of women posting their photos with hijab on social media, given that men can access their accounts? It's a very valid question. To be honest with you, you have, you have, make analogy on the reality now. Is it haram for a woman to stand in my place to deliver a speech? No. Type. 
is it mubah or halal for a woman now with the hijab to come and dance? So what's the difference? The action, yes. Standing here to talk with a modest way is permissible. A new action with a new niya, ra'as niya gada, is it permissible? No, it's not permissible. It leads to something else. So the intention, the action decides. Now, why do I need to put my photo? I'm, I'm not saying haram. I'm just paying your attention how we can have it sometimes and for some people, yes or no. So it depends on not just... Well, I have two questions, by the way. I have the question of why and the question of how. I, 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 I will be frank with you. My wife, she's a professor in the university. She's a, uh, she holds a PhD in Quranic Tafsir. She decided to put her photo in the Facebook. But, and my daughters, two daughters as well. Arrange with them now. Now, she discussed with me. She said, I said, what do you think about this? I said, okay, what do you, she said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a lecturer. And many people, they're approaching me. And she's a referee for some journals in, you know, something. So I'm invited, and they invite me. So what's the problem? I said, okay. She decided to put it. But now, is the purpose to do like celebrities with a makeup, with something very new in the face? Why? She said, I want just them to recognize me. So she put her photo from a, a little bit medium distance, and she made some kind of blur, just 10% of blur, which means if anyone wants to just to make benefit of the photo in a bad way, even if you maximize it, you can't have any kind of image. So if you look at it, you realize, you recognize that this is that person, and that's it. This is the purpose, and this is the way. But what is the need? Can any woman tell me what is the purpose of holding a mobile and having this, what is this? What is the purpose? Ah, you tell me. You tell me. What is my, 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 my profile with? What is this? Well, I'm not joking. What is this? What is this? What is the purpose? You tell me. Don't tell me that this is a normal photo. This is not a normal photo. Tayyip, originally, in original status. Ish, khawaftuni. أنا فكرت في إشي. السيلفي. No, because this is a reality. This is a reality. Now, do I need? Yes, maybe. I'm a professor. I'm a doctor. I'm a surgeon. The people they need to contact me. I'm I'm a teacher. The parents they want to deal with me. They want to know that this account belongs to me or not. So there is needs. Yes, and no problem with that. Put a modest, nice one. You know, maintaining your modesty, your purity in a nice way. This, ah, طبعاً. Okay, I'm not saying. Don't be a soldier as well. Okay, I'm not saying this. Normal, official, nice, modest way. Okay, if there is a need. So the why and the how decides whether yes or no. Clear? Okay. Zakum Allah khair. Ah, خلاص هذا صح؟ Which one is the one? Sorry, I can hide it anymore, Jota. Is taking pictures haram? No. Ya jama'ah, taking photos, pictures is not haram. The subject, the status that you are taking could be haram. When we say porno, we are talking about naked people, which is haram for them to show themselves for others. Are you with me? So it's not the photo itself, it's the content. Which makes it haram or permissible? Can you talk to the opposite gender on social media depending on the rules? Has a sort of cool come experts. Depending on the rules, yes or no? It depends. You know, it depends. It depends. Yes and no. By the way, now it is permissible to me as a man in Islam to talk with sisters. For a reason, yes. There is a reason, valid reason, in public, speaking for a purpose. When I finish this, am I allowed to speak with one of the sisters alone inside and close the door? No, it's haram. Tayyip, here. 
Is there a need to do something in public? Yes, maybe we are a group, maybe we are a company, maybe we are a voluntary group. We need to know, Assalamu alaikum, where we will meet. Sheikh, this is haram. No, it's not haram. Okay, Assalamu alaikum, oh, where will you meet? What do you think? Blah, 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 whatever, in public. Tayyip, in private. Assalamu alaikum, sister, can we talk in private? Is it haram? Not necessarily, it depends. Stand with me, Maybe, maybe there are some very specific details that should not be known to others. Like, for example, I'm, I'm, a, work, I'm, I'm a company, for example, employee, okay? Okay, we are a group for whatever reason. We have males and females. I'm the CFO. You know CFO? What does it mean? Money, money. The money of the company, okay? For, for example, I'm the CFO. The CEO, for example, it's a lady. So she needs me to tell her something, you know, very accurate with regard to one of the employees who are sitting there. Excuse me, can I explain? Okay, we can go there and speak tap, 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 or something. No problem. There's something in private with, no problem with that. But we are not allowed, just because of this, to go alone to the hotel. It's haram. Are you with me? So it's not a black and white. So it depends. Yes and no. What depends basically, make analogy on the reality. Can I have this? No. Tab why? Yes, yes, no. Tayyip. Now, now test your heart in such cases. You are a group of volunteers for Islamic volunteers. Okay. You are discussing about something. Is there a need, you, for example, Mr. Muslim, to speak with this sister in the private? If you said yes, tell me what is the justification for that? Sometimes, yes, yes, sometimes. You decide. But after decision, there is what we call the action bil ma'roof, the way. Tayyip, there is a justification. I found a justification. It's something in private because someone is making a trouble. We need to make, to solve the trouble, not without letting the others know. Okay, there's a justification. The way. Can I send her a message at 2 a.m.? 12 a.m. Wait, wait, wait. What does it mean? What does it mean you are type? I send a message at 12 a.m. Not asking about the problem. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Hope you are good. How do you feel now? Is it okay? You know something? Wait, 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 wait. All of these things should not be mentioned. Because in reality, basically, you are not allowed to do <laughs> these things. So the justification does not mean do it in any way at any time. <laughs> if you want to ask your, your female colleague, for important question, do you go to her house and her room and you knock the door at 1 a.m. to ask her the question? Or you wait next day to when you go to the office? The same thing applied on the WhatsApp or the whatever. <laughs> so make analogy. Are you with me? And use the golden rule. You know the golden rule in all religions, by the way? What is, what is golden rule? Do not do to the others what you hate others to do for you. Yes? Type. Okay. Oh my God, this is a big question. Is the music halal? If yes, what kind of music? By the way, the music could be like permissible, but it depends on what you are using with and for the purpose of what and the content and it is attached with what. It's a Long story. I'm sorry I can't cover it now because really, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the end of my battery. I'm not, you know the Dorisil when you play with that uh, rabbits, you know? I'm like, mm, I'm the end. So, so I need, <laughs> really, I feel very tired now. What do you think as youth, young teens, we should do with the opposite? Should I? Gender. Ah, the opposite gender since now. Ah, I, I, did, I, I did answer many of this, yes. We'll cover the rest maybe during the last session. Khala? Yeah. Taib, and I, I beg your pardon. Really, I'm very tired now. I have to stop because I need, I still I have two sessions. We have at six a session and at? Eight. At eight. Yeah. Inshallah, two sessions. See, at six, it's in Arabic. Okay? At eight, it will be Q&A session, inshallah, bidnillah. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. We'll cover the rest of the questions uh, during the uh, opening session. Please have a seat. Please.